If you ever thought it'd be cool to fly in a small private jet, how about a small vintage open air plane? I had the chance to hop in a two seater and fly from the UK to France in one insane day where the line between exhilarating and terrifying was definitely blurred. Why? I was retracing an important piece of history, the miracle of Dunkirk, which occurred on these sandy beaches 77 years ago. It was the first year of World War II and British, French, Belgian, and Canadian troops had just lost the Battle of France. They were cut off from each other and surrounded by the German army, and it was crucial that the Allies escape France or risk destruction. I buried my face in the blessed sand and I, I almost prayed that the next one would be mine, because I didn't think I was going to get out of it. So the British army and even civilians stepped up, providing fishing boats, paddle steamers, private yachts, and more to assist with the evacuation, a move that helped save hundreds of thousands of lives. I could not believe my luck. I thought, well, damn it. Or somebody got their uh, eye on me up there after all. The story of the little boats which rescued the retreating British army is the subject of Christopher Nolan's new blockbuster. The film Dunkirk tells the story of Operation Dynamo, which is the evacuation of 300,000 Allied troops from the French coast back in 1940. And although the story of land and sea is quite well known, Fewer people know the crucial role planes played. The aviation part of Operation Dynamo is a critical and a crucial part of aviation. That's Sam Rutherford, an avid vintage airplane pilot who's bringing awareness to the planes used during the era. It was a potentially desperate disaster that was turned around uh, through some real feats of uh, heroicism. We were invited to experience what it was like for the RAF to fly over the English Channel into France as part of the Dunkirk evacuation. And if you're doubting the authenticity of this experience, I'm about to hop into this plane which was built in 1940, the same year as the evacuation. So I just got a briefing from Sue herself. I'm on the plane called Sweet Sue, right? That's what it's called. My first time ever taking a vintage plane ride. I've been briefed, I've been strapped in, I've been told a lot of don't touch this, don't pull that, so we'll see how it goes. I'm flying over the English Channel, retracing the path of what it might have been like going in for the evacuation. One of the most exhilarating flights of the day was riding the original 1940 Tiger Moth vintage plane. That ride was definitely a bit bumpier than riding on Sue's plane. It's incredible to think with all the advancements in both aviation and technology that these simple planes with no computer or fancy speedometers were able to accomplish so much. <sighs> What an experience that was. I've never done anything like that. It looks fun, but I'll be honest with you, it was, quite, it was actually quite scary. There's a lot of moments where all of a sudden you're flying and then you just feel like you're just dropping off into, into thin air. I'm just glad I made it back in one piece and uh, it was quite the experience. <laughs>